my guys, it is an absolutely, and I'm talking about spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of everything here uh, on this glorious, it is a Thursday, it is July 20th, 2023, and we are gearing up for a big weekend here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, I see I just rented out Seahorse Tiny House for a full week. So we are filling up here at the farm. Come see us while you still can. But before I crank up being, an, being a vacation rental super host, I need to get some doom and gloom out of the way. I think it was might have been Lieutenant Tom sending me this one from The Guardian, checking in with uh, James Hampson. What is going on on the, in the mind of that old man? We are damned fools, scientists who sounded climate alarm in 80s, warns of worse to come. James Hansen, who testified to Congress on global heating in 1988, says the world is approaching a, quote, new climate frontier. Yes, the world is shifting towards a superheated climate. It is 75 degrees, by the way. 75 degrees. Here in uh, upstate New York on July 20th, the high tomorrow is going to be 75. I had to put a second blanket on the uh, on the bed last night. My sister from Vermont was uh, complaining about how cold it is in New York. Anyway, that has nothing to do, obviously, with the rest of the planet. <clears throat> the world if you don't live in the Finger Lakes of New York, is shifting towards a superheated climate not seen in the past one million years prior to human existence because, quote, we are damned fools, close quote, for not acting upon warming over the climate crisis, according to James Hansen, the U.S. scientist who alerted the world alerted the world to the greenhouse effect in the 1980s. I distinctly remember being in second or third grade in the public school system in Atlanta in the mid-1960s being taught in the public schools of Atlanta, Georgia in the mid-60s about the greenhouse effect. Maybe James Hansen was my teacher. I don't remember what my teacher's last name was. Anyway, <clears throat> Hansen, whose testimony to the U.S. Senate in 1988 is cited as the first high-profile revolution of global heating, warned in a statement with two other scientists that the world was moving towards a new climate frontier with temperatures higher than at any point over the past million years, with the possible exception of the Finger Lakes of New York, bringing impacts such as stronger storms, heat waves, and droughts. And now, the world has already warmed about 1.2 C since mass industrialization, causing a 20% chance of having the sort of extreme summer temperatures currently seen in many parts of the Northern Hemisphere, not in the Finger Lakes of New York, up from a 1% chance 50 years ago, Hanson said. Quote, there's a lot more in the pipeline unless we reduce the greenhouse gas amounts. Hanson, who is now 82, told The Guardian, quote, these super storms Maybe he's talking about the lingering smoke. These superstorms are a taste of the storms of my grandchildren. We are headed wittingly 
into the new reality. We knew it was coming, close quote. Hansen was a NASA climate scientist when he warned lawmakers of growing global heating and has since taken part in protests alongside activists to decry the lack of action to reduce planet heating emissions in the decades since. He said the record heat waves that have roiled the U.S. outside of the Finger Lakes of New York, Europe, China, and elsewhere in recent weeks have heightened, quote, a sense of disappointment. Hmm. A sense of disappointment that we scientists did not communicate more clearly and that we did not elect leaders capable of a more intelligent response. It means we are damned fools, Hansen said of humanity's ponderous response to the climate crisis. We have to taste it to believe it. Yes. Um, so this has gone on and on. I love when they are, uh, <laughs> when they touch base with, uh, where is Michael Mann? Somewhere they run this by Michael Mann. Uh, I'm glad to say they gave Michael Mann about one sentence in here. Uh, okay. While global temperatures are undoubtedly climbing due to the burning of fossil fuels, scientists are divided over whether the rate is accelerating. Quote, we see no evidence. We see no evidence evidence of what Jim is claiming in the Finger Lakes of New York, said Michael Mann, a University of Pennsylvania climate scientist who added that the heating of the climate system had been remarkably steady. There you go. Michael Mann, he lives in Pennsylvania. You know, I am 10 miles. People don't realize I am 10 miles from Pennsylvania, so I'm assuming Michael Mann, kind of like me, he sees no evidence uh, of all of this Doomer stuff. You know, I was just over there, uh, you know, reading uh, my buddy Michael Campy's uh, thing on medium.com, talking about people like Michael Mann. And I guess Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles, who had the brains to move to the Finger Lakes of New York, where, of course, he would not have moved to if he had known about the wildfire smoke. But uh, it, 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 anyway, guys, it's just, you know, after sitting here, the summer is half over. This is the coldest uh, summer uh, I have ever had. I, I hear farmers already talking about, are we going to bring in our harvest before the first frost? So I, I, I don't know about you guys. It's time for a little Doomer humor. Doomer humor. And speaking of New York, baby, we're going to go over to the New Yorker for a little bit of an antidote. To uh, We're going to get a vaccine for Doomer porn. Okay, enough Doomer porn. It is time to roll up our sleeves and vaccinate ourselves against Doomer porn. I'm sure Michael Campy would, uh, would uh, cheer me on for being vaccinated against Doomer porn. So uh, take it away. The New Yorker bringing in a little Doomer humor. It is good to see. I just saw some Doomer humor showing up. Where was that Doomer humor? Just a couple of days ago. USA Today uh, having some fun with the collapse of a planet. You know, I, I've said, guys, if you cannot laugh about the collapse of a planet and the uh, death of your grandchildren by, uh, you know, either starving to death, burning to death, being eaten by cannibals, 
if you don't think there's humor in your grandchildren being eaten by cannibals, obviously you're going to have a tough time. You better learn how to laugh. And, and I seriously want to thank the New Yorker. Take it away. This is from somebody named Dennard Dale. Why ecocide is the perfect revenge on our children. Subject, a quick Anthropocene question from Big Marty 89 to the Rachel method, whatever that means. Okay, so I guess uh, we are asking Rachel, uh, whoever Rachel is, some Doomer chick named Rachel or some former Doomer chick. She is an advice columnist for the collapse of everything. Hey, Rachel, any tips for a terrified new parent? I have this nightmare in which my daughter is wandering a global desert, knife fighting other scavengers for the remaining supplies of canned food. Not too often, just every other night. How do you cope? Best, signed Martin. Okay, so this is Rachel, uh, who is also a breeder. Rachel, Rachel, the breeder, responding to, Mar to Martin, the breeder, how she copes with facing collapse. Hello, Martin. I understand. When I look at my sons, I worry about the planet. It's not dying nearly fast enough. Our little parasites might get to enjoy two, maybe even three decades before the end. And what kind of justice is that? Think of what they have stolen from us. Before motherhood, I saw dozens of different skylines. I learned languages, dances, and jokes all for their own sake. I left every shop with a new treasure and every weekend with a new memory. I did not know a single Frozen song. I have no idea what the cultural breeder reference, the humorous reference to I did not know a single Frozen song. Whatever. It was a beautiful life, and its loss will not, you know, its loss by becoming a breeder, will not go unavenged. I am sure you feel the same way, you know, uh, from one breeder to another, uh, talking about how these little planet nibblers uh, have stolen uh, their parents' lives. So now, you know, this is how parents can get revenge on their children and grandchildren by committing ecocide uh, so they can suffer faster and worse than quick than previously believed. I am sure you feel the same way, Martin. At first, I relied on community it takes a village to doom a child. Just look at how our parents united to gut the rainforest, bathe seals in oil, and turn coral into a mere memory. They provided us with a simple model. Ecocide is as much about honoring them as punishing the next generation. Sadly, Few agree, and fewer are willing to try. Well, I'm not sure about that second one, Rachel. Anyway, sure, some of my friends came through. They scattered Ziplocs and lithium batteries like apple seeds, and I love them for it. But most let me down riding bicycles over my dreams. My own brother started composting just to keep living above sea level. We don't speak anymore. 
It's a selfish world full of clean air addicts. Society pays lip service to mothers, but it let an I ideal ozone hole die. Suddenly, I was on my own. I remember holding my first... I remember holding my firstborn. I remember holding my firstborn in my arms and coming to the horrifying realization that he was a Braden. Nothing else fit. Braden, yes, Braden, Braden was as destined for lacrosse as Lucifer was to fall. My freedom and savings, the cost of that benighted destiny. Then Braden puked on me, and I declared war on his future. My husband thinks I'm joking. You know, I know exactly what Rachel is talking about. All of these doomers who think I am joking. When I'm talking about stuff, they, they look at me and, oh, 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 you're, jo you're joking, Sam. No, I'm not. Okay? The sooner humans go extinct off of this planet, the better. This is not a joke. I am not joking about human extinction. The sooner, the better. Anyway, this is Rachel's rant, not mine. My husband thinks I'm joking. He is a fool. Our other children may have their own names and faces, but they're all Bradens, thieves of cruise vacations and retirement funds. They deserve McConnell and Mansion's bipartisan vision of our future. So I got active. I stopped waiting for Earth to die and invested in Chevron. I switched to an all-beef diet. I bought a big dome truck to haul every cell phone, laptop, and e-reader that has ever died on me to a nature preserve. I call it Battery Park. It wasn't easy. I kept Braden's picture in my wallet to remind me what mattered, making his world a wasteland just like mine after the fourth Moana, M-O-A-N-A. -A. I have no clue of this cultural breeder reference. No clue what this means. Just like mine after the fourth Moana rewatch in two days. I'm glad he likes seawater. There is plenty of that in his future. With my own house in order, it was time to organize. I founded Extinction Counter Revolution, a sane answer to the misinformation and terror of survival activist. Our newsletter helps readers understand that ecocide is a two-sided issue and that our side is correct. For the low price of tomorrow, we can enjoy private planes and plastic spoons today. Why not join? I know that it's tempting to give up headlines about carbon capture, new solar energy records, and colonizing Mars are designed to keep you distracted and afraid. They want you to think that your children will live longer, better lives, and that you are powerless to stop it. That individual actors cannot ruin a planet. I say... Bring it on! This month alone, I have written op-eds championing clean coal 
federally subsidized whaling and diverting pipelines through high schools, all composed during Braden's endless lacrosse games. He cannot throw or catch, but he can inspire. Don't let negativity cloud the truth. We are doomed. Do not let negativity cloud the truth. We are doomed. Our children have a better chance of colonizing Narnia than Mars. And getting to this point took hard, focused work. So, kick back, turn on two air conditioners, and find something nice to throw away and replace. Keep fighting. We are almost there. Yours, Rachel Sinclair. <laughs> oh, God. I wish Rachel Sinclair was not a fictional character. I would be falling in love with her. Uh, guys, you know, from this point forward, uh, all joking aside, there is nothing left to do except, uh, you know, what did Bill Hicks say? Enjoy the ride. Uh, and, and grab for all the sick, twisted, black, doomer humor you can uh, on the way down. Uh, and don't let these hopium addicts uh, horse your doomer mellow. We are doomed. It's right here in the New Yorker. It's right here in the Guardian. I mean, I don't care what Michael Mann says. But anyway, I am going to wrap up this because I got to get ready for the big weekend at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I thought I had killed this hanging basket. I, good God, you should have seen this thing 15 minutes ago, but uh, <laughs> I am. Uh, I have to say I am a little bit uh, impressed with this uh, <laughs> with this flower box here. Uh, <laughs> this thing, I mean, can you even see the flower box? Uh, this is, you know, people ask me, uh, Sam, how do you deal with this? I, I, I mean, look at this, guys. What this is... This is three impatiens and two coleus plants. Looks like I've got a weed. Got to get those weeds out of here. Get those weeds out of here. Uh, three impatiens and two coleus plants in there. And the summer's only halfway through. Anyway, it is a spectacularly gorgeous evening in the coolest summer of my life looks like the tiger lily is getting ready to come out tomorrow and these are the jopai weeds that i, I plant <laughs> i planted this jopai alistair when did we plant this two years ago uh alistair and i stuck this jopai weed in the ground all right, get out there and uh, fight the doom and gloom the best way you know how. Come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Bye, guys.